I, I, you know, I want to say, second what Chris just said about stories having a lot of privacy. Nobody needs to be an expert with how to lobby. They're already experts at how to tell their story. So, so you know, or, or at least they're experts at what their story is. How to tell their story is important. So we should probably, you know, work with people, who, uh, particularly people that have a, a really good story, with making their story as potent as possible. And, and then the, the other thing that I think, what I haven't heard enough of, but I, I hope we can, we can improve upon in, in this and in future trainings that we're doing out there in the community is, what are the specific asks that we're making? We need to have those down, you know, because at the end of it all, we need to, as, as Dan was saying, we need to, you know, kind of, kind of hammer the foot to the floor as far as, you know, getting something out of it. We want to know what can they say yes to? What can what can they agree to? Um, and we want to have specific things we're asking for. Um, can you support this legislation? Can you support this legislation? Um, will you, uh, you know, will you lobby your your you know your fellow uh, legislators about these specific pieces of legislation? Will you help us advance the legislation? So well, depending was, on who you're talking. Well, was, I'm confused. <laughs> I thought we were just talking about the one bill. Okay. We well. Do you want to go ahead and answer that as part of, or Charlie? Do you want to answer the, the bills that we have? have? I don't. I think okay. that's an decided question. Explain, explain what, the, what it might be if it's not just the next iteration of twenty nine twenty two. So we will be reintroducing our our main legislation. We we know we know there's been decisions made on two things. So we know that we're going to be reintroducing our main legislation, our you know uh, healthcare for all Oregon plan bill. We also know that we will be uh, introducing legislation to uh, fund and uh, and extend the timeline on the study that was passed uh, as the bill 30, 3260 the last time around. Um, so the study law. So those are the two pieces of legislation that, that we have. Uh, I, I don't want to be, be doing it, you know, take over this thing. I just, you know, just I had two comments. The the bill um, be the same. Chris, you can hand him the, uh, the mic. Will the, name, will the name of the bill be the same? Can we say that? Will be that the, the number one. Affordable one. Healthcare for All Oregon Act. We don't know that yet. Yeah, we will know that sure. by We will uh, know by February, though, right? By, yes, the, yeah. by the rally day. Okay. Um, can I also make one comment, too, that, um, although Charlie called me cynical earlier today, it could be true, uh, but um, and stories are important, I totally agree about that, but having worked on this for a long time, having been a hospital chaplain and heard hundreds of stories, I think it's really important that as we encourage people to tell their story to the legislator, that we do work with them, that it be succinct, that it be contained. Because I have sat through and seen legislators roll their eyes <laughs> because people, we can understand. It's, it's intimate, it's vulnerable, it's hard. People get really wound up in their story and then that doesn't help move us forward. So as, as leaders all in this room to move forward, just to help people be able to frame their story in a way that legislators can hear and actually move on. I would be to our best interest. That's where practice is important. And two things right. I would recommend to um, get people ready for all this are, um, one, the sick and tired training that Ross did, and I could help run another training as well. Um, the, the sick and tired training, it starts out with people telling their stories, um, and then then connecting the stories to the, um, our principles of HCAO and then um, doing difficult question sessions. So all those kind of things that we're talking about getting people familiar with is covered in that training. And I think the additional benefit of that is that with people doing that together, um, it kind of bonds people together in doing that training to be activists within our movement. And also, um, people may not, when they're just you know, asked to tell their own story, they might not even realize the stories that they have, but when they hear other people tell their stories, it will trigger stories that they actually have that they don't think of from within their own families. Um, so I think it's a really valuable training. Um, it could be done in like an hour and a half or two, and um, Ross and I can easily help 
run more trainings here in the metro area, and um, other people should be running these trainings throughout the whole state. And the other thing that I want to try to do with our local groups are, instead of just having a meeting where we talk about, okay, you know, this is what we should be doing, have a very short meeting, like meet for 15 minutes, and then go out and canvas together, and with people that are not comfortable and um, confident, have them just come and observe. And as they observe and they see people talking through things, they will be much more comfortable <laughs> then to try it themselves. And through that actual experience, they will gain a lot of confidence. I've seen this happen with other people in our local group that um, we did this with. So I would highly recommend those two things before February to get people ready. Where's the traveling mic? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, was it like so Diane said a couple of things that I think um, we were going to put on. Put on? Okay. Put on. Out. One is if you're at your legislator's office, and I don't know if it was brought up here, we talked about, you know, if you're going with a team, get some roles in your team. Who's going to introduce you? Who's going to, you know, tell a story? Who's going to give, you know, the contents of the bill? You know, divide up your activities in your team. Who's going to do what? Go with a presentation. Also watch the nonverbal language, that's really important. If you notice that the legislator is just eyes glazed over, like you said, falling asleep, go in prepared. What are you gonna do if he looks bored? How are you gonna switch gears? What things are you gonna switch to? So have that all prepared and use those nonverbals. They're really important because you wanna keep them engaged and you don't want them saying, I'm so glad they're gone when they leave. Right. Who was next? Anybody? <laughs> Are we, should we have a goal of, should we have a goal of contacting every legislator in the state? The, uh, the rationale being that even if they're not on our side, we want them to know that they have a certain constituency that really needs this legislation and is concerned about it. One other thing about telling stories um, not the story does not your personal story does not have to be about a healthcare problem. It might be about I'm a union um, leader and that my story is about how difficult it is to every single year or every single bargaining session having to deal with bargaining about healthcare and I don't want to have to have that happen anymore. It, you, you might be a small business person. Your story might be about I really want to provide healthcare for all my employees, but I really can't. Isn't there a better way that we can devise a system so that I don't have to worry about that? Um, so, so your story does not necessarily have to be a personal health care problem. It might be something else. This doesn't all have to be done on February 11th. I mean, I mean like you can, you, the, the people go down for the, for the rally, and then after the rally they have lunch and they go up to their appointments. But, but, but they're going to be in session for weeks after that. And that's what I, I, I did with, with the example I gave of, of Senator Lori, Lori Mona's and Anderson. Like, there's no way I was going to be able to get to her that day. And so you just, after the 11th, you call up and you make an appointment. It doesn't all, all have to be done on the same day. So I just got a note from Lisa. Are we going to do education process for this session? Evaluation process. Evaluation process. process. <laughs> so, um... Tim may have some notes from like, the original questions or goals from when we started. What do people want to get from this session? Do you have some, Tim? Well, I've got some uh, because we were basically three quarters yeah. through our group before that uh, was being addressed. But basically, people were wanting to come to be educated uh, in the process of lobbying and to sense the effort that's, that's there. So uh, I'll just summarize and say that. Okay. One of the things they teach you in communication is that the person who asks the questions has the power. And one of the things, if you're in the, talking to the legislature and he's asking all the, he or she is asking all the questions, they have the power. If you are asking the questions, you control the conversation. So one of the things that uh, Larry was talking about is how to ask those questions. But this is also a way of controlling the conversation so if you're getting to the point where you don't have answers and who you're even going after, 
you may switch and you're going to start asking questions yourself, and that will equalize the conversation. Very good. So um, there's a lot of pearls that have been um, exposed at, at this uh, treasure hunt. And I have a few notes, and Tim has a few notes, but um, ideas that you brought up and expressed here, if you wouldn't mind putting down in print, send me an email, and I'll collate those, and we'll make them into minutes from this meeting. Would that be fair? Mm -hmm. Can you just just recall the, the neat things that uh, you've said and others have said, what you recall? Maybe just a half page or, or a single page? So Mike, what might be helpful also for those of us who are trying to put these together is what worked, what didn't work? What could be done better? What was missing that you needed? Um, is that fair, Mike, to ask that? Anything that you felt could help more, anything that you know we didn't do or anything we should do or anything that someone did that was really wonderful, um, just put all that in because that would be very helpful as all of us go out and try doing future trainings. A few things for today. Yeah, for, for today. Uh -huh. One thing I think was good today was talking about some of the different methods and approaches for various legislators or how to approach them when they have various questions. But what I think could have been emphasized a little more or in doing the training of people to go do the lobbying, something that may need to be certain to spend time on is helping them to develop what their story is and how to tell their story. Like Kong was talking about with having a little session where people can share their stories and then people who are there can hear others and then develop their own stories. The, uh, as has been mentioned, the people who you recruit to uh, train as lobbyists don't have to come from your organization. Um, and just look around for people who you know are suffering under the system. In my case, as a counselor for uh, Lynn Benton Community College, and year after year, he has seen uh, the uh, budget be gouged by health care costs to the point where courses have been dropped, tuitions have gone up. That means people can't get their education. Um, and uh, he sees it as a crisis. And so if you know people in education and nursing, um, and you can get them to get passionate about it, and you can help them a little bit to learn how to lobby, you can get your three or four people in a pretty uh, quick sequence, I would think, I hope. Um, so what about time, time frame? Uh, we want to have these people recruited by the end of November because getting people to come to meetings after Thanksgiving is not very easy. The other thing about this is that we're going to have a 15-minute segment at the coalition meeting in November as sort of a refresher. And we want to have all the, uh, as many um, lobbyists, uh, advocate lobbyists, constituent lobbyists trained as we can by then. So think in your, in your calendar, by what date are you going to need to contact uh, people who you could train and meet with them a couple of times to go through this two-step uh, uh, sequence that Young mentioned and have that done by, say, mid-November. Uh, oh. David? Uh, no, you, you by Halloween. By Halloween, okay, by Halloween. Mm -hmm. So I would just, I would find it helpful to have the bill. Oh, oh there you <laughs> a, a copy of the bill and the sponsors. Uh, it'll be on that website? It'll sorry. be on that website. Yeah. When? It's there now. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. yay. Well, 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 the, the, the bill, is, oh, bill is, is there is the 2013 bill. Oh. Yes. The 2013 <laughs> bill, they're oh, still oh, working oh, on the wordage. The new one and yeah. especially the co-sponsor. Yeah, and we'll have uh, Gene Uphoff's uh, flashcards up there as soon as okay. he finishes those. Uh, let's see. So uh, there's a one handout here that you haven't seen yet. Kind of a, a simple um, roadmap. In fact, it was created by Rich Rohde. Uh, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's an activist from the Major 23 effort, and he's from Medford, and he's had a lot of experience with um, lobbying. And this is just a two hour uh, sample session that you could work from. You can modify it. And then he's, and some of his ideas, uh, extra suggestions are on the back of this. So we'll pass this around. 
but this is also on the uh, website that you just saw. So we're, um, any other comments? Is it possible to send out an email to the list that tells people what's on the website? Websites are notoriously passive and it's hard to get people to go, you know, it, it's easier to get people to go if you send them an email that reminds them what they can okay. find there. So, you know, so instead of having to dig through everything on the website and, you know, I, I, I don't know if we can do that. But yes, we will. I, I will do that. Uh, I was wondering if uh, there's the expectation that we gather the data on those who would come to be trained and that that's conveyed to HCAO headquarters so that uh, information can be emailed to those people? Is that a legitimate expectation? Yes. So um, I think, Tim, you're mentioning is as we all recruit uh, speakers and train them, let um, Ross know. Uh, would that be fair, Ross? <laughs> Just let them know who, who has been trained and by whom and when. Okay. The only thing I'm concerned about with the website is um, that I'm afraid people will be overwhelmed with information. We have a lot of great information on both the EF website and the regular HCAO website. And it can, I mean, it felt overwhelming even for me. And, I, you know, we should welcome people to go to check all that out. But what I would like to see is simplified, consistent talking points that we want people to repeat over and over again and come back to and say that all the other information, detailed information on the website backs up these talking points, but the consistent talking points that people can feel confident about speaking about um, and knowing what to refer to rather than feeling overwhelmed. Because if we make people feel overwhelmed that they're not going to feel confident that they're going to have all this information on the back of their hands, um, then they're not going to participate. Good point. Um, on the um, education website, I think um, there is a reference to just what you were talking about. Uh, if we can go back. website. Oh, well. But um, on the main um, Healthcare for All Education website, on the right-hand column, down a bit, you'll see um, fair questions, paradoxical answers, or, you know, and, and that's a concise list. So you can start with that and not have to go all the way into this other section. It's about too, is that too long? It's not what Kyung was talking about. I found it terribly confusing. I don't okay. understand it at all. It's so not we, a talking points document. It's, you know, I, I don't know why we want to be giving paradoxical answers, actually. I don't understand the, the aim of the document. I'm okay. sorry. I'm being we need to simplify that. We just got feedback. Um, so the, the origin of um, paradoxical answers is, is a technique you can use for selected audiences, and that is they say, I think uh, this is socialized medicine. And so instead of arguing the point, you can say, um, so you think this might be the first step to socialis socialism, or, or you can think of, of a hyperbole. And the reason to do that is that that person, uh, you acknowledge that person, you hear their concern. They have to hear that one way or another. So I take Chris's criticism. Um, it, it, it's, it's useful information, but it's not talking points. OK, not talking points. There, there will be a talking points one page summary that's coming out real soon. From Great. The I, I think we need to distinguish between two things. One is talking points, and maybe not even one page, maybe half a page. Right? Keep it simple, because the legislators are not going to hold all that information in their heads either once we tell them. So something very simple and consistent, that a message that they will hear over and over again, that if... If needed, we can go into you know, much more detail about those talking points with all the info, other info on the website, but one consistent, simple talking points, and then the other, the answers to the difficult questions. So those two separate things um, that we need easily accessible, easily found, rather than having to find it within the 200 other things on the website. Does everybody here get the e-newsletter from HCAO? 
Yeah. It's a, an emailed newsletter that comes out every two weeks or twice a month. I don't get that. I'm not sure I do. Okay. Uh, if you're not, there is, on the website, there is a place to go on the HCO website to sign up for it. Or if you want to send your name to maybe to Mike or to me just saying you want to get the newsletter, um, make sure we get you added in somehow. Or send it to Ross. Send your, net, your email address to Ross. And we'll make sure that you get in the list for the newsletter. Because the newsletter comes out twice a month. And one of the things that we will be including in the newsletter now is in each, each issue a tough question and answer so that you'll be able to use that as just every couple weeks you get a newsletter, you read it, and it should have some helpful information there for how to answer certain questions. The idea is to give it to you a little bit of time so that you're not overwhelmed all at once. You can just... So the easiest that. thing, don't email me, is, <laughs> is uh, go on to the website yourself, hcao.org. There's something that says newsletter or newsletter sign up or something like that. It's at the top center of the page. There's also one along the, the left scroll bar, so you should be able to find it. Go ahead and sign yourself up. You'll get an email right away saying, do you really want to sign up for this? You have to respond to that and say, yeah, I really want to sign up for this. The reason I'm asking you to do it yourself is because some people have been unsubscribed for, for whatever reason, you know, either administratively or they have unsubscribed themselves, or some, a friend of theirs that they forwarded the email to unsubscribe them. Because that can happen because you, if you don't use the forward to a friend button internally within the email and you hit just forward from your, your email service, if they say unsubscribe, they're going to unsubscribe you. And we cannot resubscribe you administratively. So if you've been unsubscribed or you've unsubscribed yourself, you have to resubscribe. So, so don't email me, don't email Mike, don't email Jim. Just do it yourself. It's easier. And, and it's simple. It's really, really easy. But it is a two-step process, so I know that. Thanks, Rob. We are adjourned. All right. Yay. Thank you. Gene, I want to make a recommendation on your... Uh...